guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Today we're gonna talk about 20 epic champions now here a, a, a month or two after Hydra Clan Boss has already existed inside the game. We had Deadwood Jedi on the day after Hydra Clan Boss was released. I think we might have recorded it the day of. And we took a guest at 10 of our favorite champions uh, for Hydra Clan Boss. And I'm happy to say that all of them are still really good against the Hydra Clan Boss. However, quite a few new champions, legendary epics, even a few rares, have really kind of uh, sprung out above the rest in terms of viable meta choices. Today we're going to break those champions down, and we're going to start with just epics in today's video. I will make a follow-up if you guys want, touching on legendaries, because the truth is, there's about 50 epics and 50 legendary champions that are viable and very good, above average, in my opinion, for the Hydra clan boss. So I wish I could show you my teams, but I've already used my keys, and I can't get in there and show you my pre-saved teams, which is kind of a bummer. Also, just when we're talking about quality of life, I really love that they added the regroup button, right? The regroup button to Hydra Clan Boss has been amazing. We can test different streams, different or different teams, excuse me, different strategies. My mouth is not working as fast as my brain is here, guys. But man, they need to put that button at the end of the battle. Do you want to lock in this number or do you want to regroup? If they're going to give us the regroup, which is amazing, I love they did that, you know, what point is it that, you know, it's just causing frustration. I'm sure you guys have been there. I've been there one time, some of my clanmates more than one time, where we just accidentally get crit by, or not accidentally, but we get crit by the uh, one of the heads or a couple of the heads of the dragons, and then our team just wipes or we go to regroup, but it's not the end of the turn and our team webs and we're stuck with that usually pitiful score uh, in terms of our overall damage. My gut says they might consider that in the future, uh, but suffice it to say, a lot of creators have let them know about that. A lot of you guys have let them know about that on the forums and Reddit and, and so on. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get into it here. My main team is still the team that I use with Umbral Enchantress. I'll include a link to that video in, uh, in the description below. My second team, as you guys saw momentarily there, I'm still working on my third team, but my second team bu 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 is right over here. Uh, it is uh, Venus, who is so incredibly good. We'll talk about her and Brogni and Ninja and Kimmy in the Legendary video. Also, Geo in Retro Drop. That's my number two team. Uh, not as much damage. I want to say I got like, I don't know, 15, 20 million with this team, and the majority around 30, 40 million. Whatever that damage was, it was on that uh, video. And then I'm, uh, I'm testing this third team out here. This is the third team right now. More to Makah. We'll talk about him as well, but very good against Hydra Clan Boss. Then we have Cupidus, Iron Brago, uh, Rio, and we have Aniri, and we have uh, Lydia. So again, work in progress there. Not really happy with the damage, but those are my three teams. Just to share that with you guys. Let's start by talking about one of the more obvious choices. And as a champion that I probably might sub in one of those three teams, it's Doom Priest. Like Tawana Rock, she has a very unique passive. We are healing and we are cleansing every single turn. She also has an AoE increase attack, which is nice to have on the squad. Deals a little bit of damage from the A1, but really it's all about building her fast. I built her in a relentless gear set. More turns means more debuffs cleansed off of your team, more heals. So can't say enough good things, obviously, about Doom Priest. And then moving on here, this is a champion that we talked about in that video. And suffice it to say, he's still S tier. He is the Allure of Fire Knight. Or I should say, the Allure Fire Knight, he is that version for the Hydra clan boss. Inquisitor Shamil, he has this A1. Every time an, en uh, an enemy places a debuff on an ally, uses a skill against that enemy. These counterattacks deal 50% of the damage. I have him in a toxic set, so he's land landing a bunch of poisons from this A1. On the A2, he's doing a lot of damage, basically. Uh, really good against uh, decapitated Hydra heads. And then every uh, critical hit fills a champion's turn meter by 7.5%. Whenever an ally receives a fear or true fear debuff from from an enemy, this skill will instantly remove that debuff and fill that ally's turn meter by 15%. This is what makes him so incredible. Along with that A1, he is cleansing all those true fears off of your team. Uh, Inquisitor Shamil is definitely one of the best champions overall, uh, you know, including legendaries for the Hydra clan boss. So you're right down there. Let's go ahead and, and revisit one of the champions I showed you on my main teams. Retro Droth, man. I mean, she is getting it done here. Uh, she's a reviver, which is good to have on your team, obviously. Veil Champions 
it's incredibly important to have on your team. I use Wretched Draft. I use uh, Duchess. I use Tatura Reinhide. Whoever I have for Veils, I'm trying to have one Veil champion on my squad, and you can't get much better than Wretched Draft. She has Force Affinity, which so far, depending on the heads, depending on affinities, uh, but is certainly in the first and second cycle is helpful. And then she has a decreased attack, which is incredibly important on her A1 as well. We already talked about the Revival. More Veils and more heals everywhere off of this passive. Just overall an incredibly, incredibly good champion. Now let's talk about one of the most important abilities to have inside this game uh, when we talk about Hydra Clan Boss. And I made a whole video just about this ability and how important it is. And that's why Umbral Enchantress is one of my favorite champions for Hydra Clan Boss, guys. It's really this A2. We can shut off the A3 ability, Undying Evil, uh, against Hydra Clan Boss, the ability that she's known for in the arena, right? Instead, with this Immolate ability, attacks all enemies, has a 100% chance when Butcher placing Block Buffs for three turns on a three-turn cooldown. So Block Buffs is going to be there all the time. Block Buffs buffs, I cannot stress this enough, is the number one thing I am looking for for every single Hydra clan boss team. It's nice to have a remove, a buff remover on your team as well. We'll talk about a couple here on the list, but I like having one of each, right? Because you're not going to, usually you're not going to have block buffs off all the time. They could cleanse it away. You might not be the same speed as those, uh, those, uh, those heads, excuse me. I almost called them dragons, those hydras. So having a block buffs and a buff remover on my team is the way to go, in my opinion. So Umbral Enchantress, definitely a great champion to have on your squad. Let's talk about one of those uh, buff removers here, guys. And she's from Halloween uh, of what? Two years ago now? In 2019, I believe? Madam Ceres. So Madam Ceres is great. She's going to be stealing buffs everywhere. Plays block debuffs on all allies for two turns if any buff is stolen. Thank you very much. Trick and Treats is a great ability against Hydra Clan bosses. But really, Midnight Ritual is as well. Just like in the arena, we are removing all buffs from all enemies. And she's a debuffer, placing decreased attack and decrease of defense. Decreased defense, very important to get more damage, obviously, against the Hydra Clan boss uh, uh, heads. And decreased attack is incredibly important, guys. Incredibly important to have decreased attack. Is it head of mischief? He has like 300% extra damage. Uh, really, really can just one-shot your entire team. So having decreased attack is really going to help mitigate that damage. There's a few heads that can just do, you can just wipe your team, right? And that's why that free regroup is so important. Another champion is Ryan the Conjurer, right? She's another reviver, uh, has revived dead ally on a four-turn cooldown, and then again, have a 100% chance of removing all buster all enemies and placing a weaken. So similar to Midnight Ritual, this is on a three-turn instead of a four-turn cooldown when booked. Uh, no decreased attack, no decreased uh, defense. We do have that weaken. But most importantly, we are removing all buffs from all enemies. So Ryan the Conjurer can help, you know, keep your team alive with the revival and uh, or make them, you know, get back to being alive when they die. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, also cleansing or removing, I should say, all those buffs off the enemies. So Ryan the Conjurer, very, very good champion. Let's talk a little bit about actually, you know what, guys? Let's go back. Let's, let's stay with the decrease attack because there is a champion, Paidma, who deserves everybody's attention. She's a defense-based demon spawn champion. Void Affinity. She has the best decrease attack in the game on her A1, or one of the best, right? Attack one enemy two times. If the attack is critical, again, Void Affinity. You don't have to worry about negative affinity matchups. Has a 100% chance when booked of placing a decrease attack on all enemies for two turns. That's her A1, guys. So A1 is placing decrease attack on all enemies. That's amazing. We also have an AoE with decreased accuracy, which is a great ability, and then removes all buffs from the target and places them on this champion. Uh, so stealing all buffs, a lot of damage on a three-turn cooldown, appropriate, one of the hardest hitting defense-based uh, damage abilities inside the game. So paid a very, very good option. Let's talk about some damage, guys. Man. Let's go to Undead Horde here because there is no better damage dealer right now than Husk. Everybody is talking about Husk. The, the, you know, the cat is out of the bag on this champion. Just an absolute stud. Has a provoke on his A1. Handy in other areas. Not so much for the Hydra Clan boss. But an AoE damage dealer on Despair that is really second to none. It's, it's really Royal Guard and Husk are two of the best in the game. In terms of sheer damage dealers, we also have damage increased according to this champion's current HP on the A3. So a nice single target damage of... 
uh, ability on his A3 as well. But really, Husk is just, you know, top of the class, cream of the crop when we talk about AoE damage against the Hydra Clan boss. And we just mentioned him, so no better time to discuss Royal Guard as well. Royal Guard, man, takedown is back in a big, big way against the Hydra Clan boss. I say back because, you know, the, the higher stages of dungeons, 21 through 25, and uh, of course, uh, the Doom Tower bosses, it has mitigated that enemy max HP abilities. But man, Royal Guard is just so incredibly good in terms of a damage dealer against the Hydra Clan boss. As a matter of fact, I probably should put Royal Guard in that last team or Husk in that last team that I showed you guys instead of, I forgot who I was using, Cupidus. I think Cupidus needs to be on the same team as Venus if I'm going to use those two champions. So I'd be way better off, probably a few million extra damage had I went with Royal Guard or Husk on that third team that I shared with you guys. His A3 is great as well, has decreased speed. Uh, it just a very, very good ability, right? Very, very good kit overall on Royal Guard. It also has decreased defense on his A1. So he's bringing a lot to the table. People know him for the damage, but really he's an overall amazing champion. Let's talk, go back to block buffs, right? Block buffs, man. Ugo is one of the best champions. One of the best. She's on my main team, the Umbral team. She's insanely good guys she is your decrease defense champion she is your decrease uh or excuse me your block buffs champion she has a leech on the a1 so some heals there we're removing debuffs and healing on the a3 as well man she's bringing a lot of what you need to the table uh in just such a unique kit Fairly easy to keep alive. A lot of defense, a lot of HP. We're really paying a lot of attention to the base stats on these champions. Incredibly important that we can scale them appropriately, especially if you don't... Can't hear anything. Best artifacts inside the game. So Ugo, I am building her fast. I actually have her in Relentless Gear. I'm trying to keep these block buffs up all the time on the Hydra Clan boss. You know what I said? I run her on my main team. And now I'm second guessing that. Maybe I didn't run her because I have Umbral, or maybe I ran her uh, alongside her. I forgot because I can't see the uh, the menu right now. Let's talk about revivers here, guys. The best two epic revivers, in my opinion, and not even close, is Ursula the Mourner, who is very good, again, against the Hydra clan. She's very good everywhere, but especially against Hydra as well. Has a turn meter on the A1, whatever, but it decreases attack and increases attack on a three-turn cooldown on the A2. Granted, 150 books to get there, but still, this is a very, very, very good ability. Again, looking for that decreased attack. Uh, Going to be instrumental to have success, prolonged success over the course of the duration of a battle on Hydra clan boss. And then this revival, man. Ooh! Requiem, five turn cooldown, 75% HP, turn meter, increased defense. We have uh, Strengthen as well, the big version. Sign me up, Ursula the Mortar. Very, very, very good. Also, I happen to prefer Godseeker Aniri because I am looking for this A2. Uh, she has a great revival, uh, four turn cooldown, one ally, turn meter, and resets the cooldown of all their skills, which is really nice to have. She has this really cool passive to increase the amount of healing all hours received by 10%. That's from anybody on my team uh and then if an ally is about to get killed she preempts that uh fatal hit with a revive on death but really this a2 is what gives her the edge in my opinion off of some of the other revivers in the game such as arbiter uh who again legendary champion but i love the quest for meaning heals all allies great heal uh an attack not a lot of damage right but then decrease the duration of all buffs on enemies and increase the duration of all buffs on allies so unlike Arbiter's A2, we're also the increase in the duration of all buffs. If I don't have Krisk on my team, I'm definitely using Godseeker Aniri to extend the duration of all the buffs on my team. I really, really like Godseeker Aniri. I think she's an incredible champion. Again, her base stats are really, really solid. Maybe a little bit shy on the HP, but a solid defense and just an overall incredible champion. Let's go back to Bannerlords here for a second. Talk about my favorite debuffer in the epic category for the Hydra Clan boss, and that's Stagnite, guys. Had decreased speed on the A1 nice to have on the a2 we have decreased attack and decreased defense stagnant can actually put out a lot of damage as well he has a bunch of hp solid amount of defense he's very fast as well at 107 base speed and i have to say the lead the pack is really nice to have this passive places an increased accuracy on any ally for one turn every time the ally has a debuff resisted by an enemy Nice to have that increased accuracy kind of built-in ability there in Stagnite. Just overall, a tremendous champion. Uh, let's talk about the other enemy max HP champion, and that is Seer. So, Seer's dangerous. She's like a nuke, man. She's gonna wipe out everything. All the buffs on your team and the enemy's team, right? You done lost your damn mind. When you get your damn mind, you call me. So, it's nice to have Karma Burn. I am not a big fan of using Seer 
on the Hydra Clan boss because my buffs are already getting stolen anyway. I want to really try to keep them when I have them. However, with that, you know, in mind, you can build a really strong and viable team around Seer as well. And if you have it on auto, you can strategically uh, choose when you're using the Karma Burn ability. Either way, nice to have a ton of damage based on enemy max HP and a, a stripping all the buffs off the enemies on one ability from Seer. So Seer is definitely being used quite a bit. I think she's overall a great champion. Champion. Uh, we have Duck the Pierce, guys. Duck, people sleep on Duck, man. He's a really good champion. He has a decreased accuracy on the A1, which again is very, very nice to have. He has a decreased attack and decreased defense on a three turn cooldown here on his A2. Very Stag Knight esque here on this A2 ability. The only caveat is has to be a critical hit to land that decreased defense. Good news is we are placing that decreased attack, which is, I would argue, well, equally as important to having decreased defense, right? Decreased uh, attack, again, so important. Decreased attack, HP burn, which we'll talk about in a second. Removing buffs, uh, block buffs, blocking that poison cloud ability. Uh, all this stuff is going to be very important. And then he has uh, faction crib. Okay, so I thought it was all battles. My bad on that. Uh, but either way, Duck is a great option, especially if you don't have Stag Knight. Uh, big fan of Duck the Pierce. Let's talk about HP burn for a moment here guys and let's start with sacred order champion mordecai mordecai very very good a great burner to have right he has a uh, depleted uh, turn meter on the a1 more with the burn has an aoe chance of decreasing turn meters on the a2 but really is this heavenly flames ability it's on a four turn cooldown 100 chance of placing an hp burn on all enemies for two turns also has an increased attack on all allies for three turns on this ability mordecai is a tremendous and reliable hp burn placer on your team i do want to give a shout out here this is kind of a he's not on my list technically the 20 champions but I think he probably ought to be in his Akoth the Seer. He's a companion champion, so you're getting 21 here, guys. But it just kind of came to my mind because his A2 normally... It's not the best HP burn in the game because it's only a 20% chance of placing, but the chance of placing that debuff HP burn increases to 100% chance because it increases by 20% for each enemy alive and all the heads count as different enemies. So Akoth the Seer is another very reliable burner that you can place on your team. Great on the same team as Ryan. He's going to instantly activate his A3 ability, which gives your allies a shield as well. Uh, the other one is, of course, Geomancer, right? What's so great about Geomancer is all all this burn damage that he does, all this extra damage you can get out of his passive, but really his AoE on the A1 is very nice to have, especially again for the Hydra Clan boss with the decreased accuracy, right? So we're getting a 40% chance of placing the big version, uh, obviously, of decreased accuracy on the A1 with a decently hard-hitting AoE attack. Overall, he's one of the best damage dealers you can have on your squad, mainly because of the burn, but again, having that AoE on the A1 is nice to have as well. He's stealing buffs as well he's doing quite a bit uh with all of his abilities geomancer is definitely one of my favorite champions added last year overall i want to give a shout out to a champion a couple champions that not a lot of people talk about here i think a lot of these have been pretty obvious but let's talk about battle sage guys battle sage is a very very good and underrated champion not just for the arena but also for hydra clan boss why again on her a1 she has an aoe attack it's really nice to have so to get some extra damage out of who is otherwise just mainly a support champion for your squad. She has increased attack on all allies and then removing all debuffs. You're getting a nice cleanse on a three turn cooldown. The increased attack cannot be removed. So you don't have to worry about that being stolen and then you're really in trouble with increased attack on all the Hydra heads. She also has revive on death on an ally for three turns. Ally will be instantly revived. That is uh, obviously what revive on death is. Real men of genius. Real men of genius. So Battle Sage, a very, very solid champion uh, to have. Another one here, guys, is in the Bannerlord category, and she's actually Chancellor Yasmin. Chancellor Yasmin is a really solid champion. Look at her base stats. She's so fast, 109 base speed, almost 17, 17, 17 there we go, K HP, and then almost 1,100 on the defense. Overall, a very, very good champion now for the Hydra Clan boss. On her A2, heals an ally with 40% of their max HP, heals by 60% instead if the ally has 50% uh, HP or less, so a very powerful heal on a two-turn cooldown. And then on the A3, we have a 75% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies, then plays a sleep debuff on uh, for one turn on enemies who have active buffs. So the sleep doesn't matter, but a four-turn cooldown, removing all buffs from all enemies. You know what, guys? She's good, a good healer, 
But now that I read her kit again, I had her jotted down here because I am seeing her on a lot of my clanmates teams. I'm going to go out and say that actually Hope is probably a little bit better, right? She has increased the duration of all buffs on all allies by one turn. We talked about how much we value that ability. And then we have a shield also on that A2. On the A3, we have a 75% chance of removing all buffs on a three turn cooldown instead of a four. So I take out Chancellor Yasmin and I'm adding in hope to it. I'm doing this video on the fly here, guys. On the fly. There is one more champion I wanted to talk about in today's video, and it is actually a Shadowkin champion. We haven't mentioned any Shadowkin yet, but it's actually a Boro. Boro is a very good champion. Check out her A1, guys. Attacks one enemy, has a 50% chance of placing a decreased defense, will attack all enemies instead if the target is under four or more debuffs. So let's stop right there. To get a lot of value out of your Boro team, just make sure you're really loading up on the debuffs alongside of her, right? Have that AoE decrease speed. Use a champion like we haven't mentioned her in today's video, but Tainix Hate Flower uh, is great with the heals and the decrease speed, plus uh, plus a champion like Stag Knight or Madam Ceres, that's three debuffs already, and then block buffs, maybe Ugo having her on your team, you're going to easily get at least one of those uh, Hydra heads with four debuffs, and then you're going to have a powerful AoE with the decreased defense on on the A1 ability. She also has veils built into her kit, perfect veils built into her kit as well. We already know how valuable having a veil or perfect veil champion is on your team. And she has good multipliers. She's dealing a lot of damage. Whenever she receives that veil or perfect veil, she has a revive on death for three turns. So she's fairly easy to keep alive for an overall squishy champion. So there we have it, guys. I'm going over my list right now. I don't think I forgot anybody. Those are the 20, really 22 champions that I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know who I'm forgetting. There's a lot of champions, to be fair, that I didn't mention who are very, very good. As I mentioned at the top of the video, it's probably like 50 really solid epics overall, but these are my personal favorites. Again, I want to hear from you guys. Which of these champions do you use? Which are you going to take out of the vault and maybe build uh, because, you know, I mentioned their names in this video? And what's a champion that I snubbed this not on my list that deserves to be? Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.